My topic today is give and receive. Give and receive are two wheels on which the universe settles or rests or works. Unless you give, you will not receive, which we all know, right? But how much of giving are we doing? And when we say give, I don't mean money. That's the first thought that comes into your head. Oh, give? Matlab paisa dena hai kya? Nahi. There are various ways in which you can give. You can give someone a smile. Can we? Can we all smile? It's so easy to smile. Is it so difficult to smile? But people even refuse to smile. I've heard of people saying, oh, she doesn't even bother to look at me. She looks through me whenever I see her. Why should I smile at her? It doesn't cost you anything to smile in spite of all of that. You can give someone a hug. It makes such a difference to give someone a warm hug. Give someone your time. Give someone your year so that that person can vent out. There are various ways of giving. When we are receiving, we love to receive. Everybody loves to receive gifts and compliments and various other things. But there's a trick here in receiving also. Are you ready to receive not compliments, criticism? We are not ready to receive criticism, so that also comes in receiving. Receiving is just not taking, 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 but also things which we don't like to hear or see. Now, when somebody criticizes you, now as a, as a lady, as a woman, invariably I will take this topic of weight putting, okay, putting on weight, which is a very touchy topic with women. Never ever, this is a tip for all the men around here, never ever tell a woman she's put on a little bit of weight. <laughs> you're, you're, it will be a wrong thing to say, but anyway, uh, on a serious note, if you tell somebody you've put on weight, if somebody criticizes you, you say, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? You put on a little bit of weight. So don't take, be offended by something like that. Ask yourself, have I? Which means I need to do something if I have put on weight. I need to uh, maybe go on a diet or work out or something like that. So take criticism positively. That is correct receiving. We get offended immediately. Our egos just go up and you feel, how dare, what the hell? Look at her. What is she telling me? You know, kind of things we start off on. So receiving compliments and gifts and all is very easy and very nice you feel about it. But receive criticism with that grace. That is actual receiving. So now coming back to giving. <clears throat> I'll give you one example which I usually quote when I give these talks. Now, um, we all of us have, by and large, most of us have a cup of tea. At least once a day, we have a cup of tea. Right. So do you know where this plant or shrub has grown in which part of the entire world? You have no idea. <laughs> Not China. <laughs> so we don't know where this is grown, okay? So now this, this particular soil in which this plant or shrub is grown, there are so many things working under the ground. There are worms and ants and other crawly, creepy creatures which are sort of uh, loosening up the soil or whatever is required, right? So that much of an obligation you've taken from the universe. Then also, there's nature which works, like rain, tide, sun, all these things, the weather conditions, for which help that plant to grow, right? So many more obligations of Mother Nature. Then there'll be people working on it. Somebody will be plucking the leaves, somebody will be cutting the leaves, somebody will be doing so many other processes, what not. You will never know who they are, would you? You will not even know how to thank them because you don't know who they are. So how many obligations have you taken from nature and from people living in the universe whom you will not even get an opportunity to say thank you, correct? This is just one cup of tea. The obligations you have taken, the milk has its own story. So remember or try to remember right from your birth till now, how much of an obligation you have taken from the universe and people in the universe who you will never meet to even say thank you. So what is the give back? 
When are you going to give back? And how? So invariably, when we reach middle age, you face with certain problems. Life is such. Nobody is there without any issues or challenges or problems in life, okay? And then you ask the universe, why me? What have I done? Why me? So somebody up there will say, why not you? What have you done? So what is the give back? For example, you breathe air. Can you just inhale, inhale, inhale? You have to exhale. It comes to us free. But if you don't exhale, you will never be able to take in the next breath. Isn't it? So everywhere and every time, you have to think of how you will give back. And this, if the give back is not, um, we, can, we can never compete with the receiving that we take from nature, but the give back, if it's not sufficient enough, or to that extent, you will come across a stumbling block, which is a karmic block, as they say. You will face issues or challenges in your life, because in that case, the universe, the universe will snatch it away from you some way or the other. It has the right to do that. So you'll have illnesses in the house where money will go to the hospitals and uh, doctors. You might have a crash in your business. You lose money. Somebody will rob you of something. Some relationship issues, something or the other will definitely happen. This is a tip I'll tell you from my own experiences. If the give back is not sufficient, you will come across these kind of blocks. And if you feel there is some block coming here, Immediately start your give back. Now, how can you give back? Not money. Feed stray dogs. Feed cows. Water plants. Help someone. Reach out to someone. That should be in your DNA to reach out to anyone. To anyone. You don't have to say, oh, this one doesn't belong to me or that one is another person and why should... I, why should I help her? Don't have these kind of thoughts. Many a times you feel you have helped her so much or helped him so much. Today he doesn't even care for me. That doesn't matter. That's not your problem. Somebody up there will take care of that. You have given, you give. Like they say, the right hand should not know what the left hand has done. It has to be like that. It has to be swaha as they say. You give, forget about it. Don't keep an account of what you have done for someone. That is actual giving. If you keep an account, oh, I did this for that one, that one, then it doesn't work. So giving has to come naturally. And why am I saying money is not the only way to give? Because that is considered as the lowest form of charity or giving. Money. If you have 1,000 rupees with you to give somebody 10 rupees, really doesn't pinch, does it? Correct? So when it comes to giving, you, your first step is at the back. You notice yourself, it's so subtly done, pehle to hai apna, if somebody asks you something. Right? So giving money is the lowest form of charity. The better than giving money, the next is uh, annadan, feeding someone, food. There are lots of people on this universe who probably sleep on a hungry stomach. So feed someone. And feeding also doesn't have to be a pizza and a pasta or something. Feeding can be just vada pao also. Okay? So don't get these thoughts in your head. Oh, feed someone, I have to feed this person a big mejwani. Uh, nahi, aisa nahi hai. So second anyway is annadan. Third is to give someone a job. So that his life is settled. If you are in a position, you may not be a... Uh, MD or CEO of a company, but you may know someone, you can always suggest that this person needs a job, can you employ him somewhere? So, giving someone employment is, just we say, his life is settled. So, you learn somebody to, fi uh, to fish and not give him the fish, it's something like that. You teach somebody how to fish and not give him the fish. So, giving somebody a job and employment. And the best form, of giving is imparting knowledge. As I was talking to doctors now, I said doctor's profession and the teacher's profession is the noblest of professions in this world today. It is a fact in the universe. 
So imparting knowledge is the highest form of charity. Knowledge is the only thing that will go with you when you drop your physical body. Only whatever you have learned or whatever knowledge and your karmas, that's all that goes with you when you leave the physical body. So the highest form of giving is knowledge. So now you know so many various ways of giving someone to someone, something to someone. In a small thing of appreciation, how do we, how much do we appreciate people? Do we? Very rarely. And this has to, you have to become that. You can't act all these things out, however great an actor you may be. You have to become that. You have to become, it just has to come to you so naturally, giving. You don't have to think, what do I do? What do I do? No, it just has to come. So you have to become that. That is very important. That transformation has to happen to you to become a giver. Think that way. There are various opportunities in a day where you will come across so many such cases where, oh, I could have, I could have given him this. I could have given this person a lift in the car. So many times this happens. If somebody is uh, crossing the road, suppose a, maybe a physically handicapped person or an old person crossing the road. May I help you? I'll help you cross the road. Isn't that giving? And I'll tell you something honestly. It is a very different feeling and an exhilarating feeling when you give someone, not when you receive. You feel happy about receiving, all right. But when you give someone, it's a beautiful feeling inside. So guys, before I extend my time, I know TEDx has a particular time limit. I do not want to exceed my time. The point I'm saying is, get this into your head somewhere. Somewhere inside you, this thing of giving should be there. And we do it only when we have calamities, like COVID major hua tha. Oh, we saw humanity on another level. When such calamities happen, earthquakes happen, and things happen, that is the time you see people coming together and giving so much and doing so much for humanity, valuing human life so much. After that, what? Today we are back to square one. What's happening today? So it should not be a thing, something for just a calamity or just some problem. You just have to be, that's what I'm saying, when you become like that, you don't have to wait for a calamity to prove yourself. You can just do it all the time. And smile is the easiest and the simplest way of giving someone something. You just smile and speak to a, to a person, it really goes miles as they say. You know, don't talk from here. It should not be a mind-to-mind -mind talk, which we usually do. We usually do a mind-to-mind -mind talk. Shift your focus to the heart. Make the journey, a 16-inch journey, just from your mind to your heart. And speak to a person with your heart. You will change the entire situation. Anything can be overcome. Any relationship problems can be overcome. Everything can be overcome. If you touch your heart, if you touch somebody's heart, if you speak through your heart. Okay, I hope I've made myself clear and I hope you'll have liked this. Thank you very much. Start implementing it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.